Restaurant Christine is a delightful and unexpected prize that I found in Torrance, adjacent to Palos Verdes and the beach cities. Christine's features outstanding cuisine inspired by a classic French style, but with contemporary flavors of Italy and Pan-Asian cleverly infused together. The restaurant is charming, it's colorful, warm and cheerful, with seating on two levels and a very special room next door that allows for larger parties and intimate functions. Having worked side by side with some of the country's most notable celebrity chefs, Christine has created her own award-winning signature style, inspiring, creative, and delicious. Well, we finally made it to Christine's in Torrance. How do you feel about the drive? Outside of a little traffic, it turned out great. Uh, <laughs> Did you sleep most of the I slept the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky getting around this Torrance, Palos Verdes corridor, very unusual, but then plop right in the center of it is a place like this, Christine's. It, and it's a beautiful little restaurant. It's charming, it's quaint. It's kind of funky looking and, uh, and the food was really marvelous. It is superb. Well, Chef Christine Brown is a highly recognized chef. She was noted by LA Magazine as one of the uh, top female chefs. Uh, Zagat has rated her number one in the South Bay for probably 10 years in a row. And she's uh, classically fr French trained, but she's trained all over the world, Hyde. And uh, I mean, her influences are global. So mm -hmm. very exciting stuff. You could see it in the food. It's Absolutely. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. So let's Speaking talk of about food, yeah. let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> What did we get first? Okay. First we had the salt and pepper shrimp and crispy pork shumai dumplings. This is two pepper shrimp, salt pepper shrimp on a skewer and two crispy nice pork shumai on, on spoons with a little uh, glaze, Thai glaze underneath it. Mm -hmm. It was served with a bed of greens and I love this. I, I love the combination of the flavors, the textures. I just wish there was more of it. I could eat a whole bunch more than one each. With, without a doubt. I mean, you give me anything crustacean and I'm a happy girl, so stick it on a stick, take it off a stick, I don't care. I love a shrimp, but um, there was just two, so that was a bummer. It was meant to share, just beginning. But the shumai was just perfect. It was delicately wrapped and I loved just the just a light acidity of the vinaigrette that they served it with and um, just the right amount of acidity. It was perfect. And the nice little crunch too. I've never had fried shumai. So. Yeah, it was crispy and we love crispy. I like crisp. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing we had was um, an impressive ahi tuna three ways. So this was, um, it started with a, in the center a pokey stock, which pokey just basically means a, a seasoned uh, rare ahi tuna. This had a little bit of dots of fresh papaya, uh, really delicate flavors, not overly spicy. I've had a lot of pokey that's very spicy. This was extremely subtle, but she used an excellent grade of tuna, which I very much appreciate. It was very buttery and melty. There was a few slices of a tempura ahi, very, very lightly breaded. Uh, that a couple dipping sauces to choose from, a spicy wasabi, uh, another delicate uh, hoisin or some kind of a sweeter sauce, and uh, then the chili, the toganashi chili mayonnaise, which was uh, fun to dip it in. And then the third being the green tea crusted ahi, which was a beautiful presentation. You had almost that dirt looking on the outside, like you'd thrown it into a pile of sand or something, and uh, but it just melted in your mouth. That was delicious. You can't go wrong with fresh ahi. Absolutely. Good, great. Next one we had was an amazing dish. I think it's probably the signature appetizer. It's the warm mushroom mm. salad. Mm. This consisted of portobello, shiitake, and button mushrooms. It's sauteed with shallots, fresh basil, and garlic. It's laid on a bed of greens with gorgonzola cheese. Underneath that is a delicious warm mushroom custard, almost like a flan. Um, that was absolutely amazing. What I liked about it, it was a little chewy. It was almost like crushed. Um, Crushed mushrooms, I guess, in a flan. I love that. And the aged sherry vinaigrette just, and croutons just gave a different texture and oh. tanginess. And this, this dish just blew me away. I mean, first of all, the little kind of the gorgonzola, you know, you throw gorgonzola onto anything Isn't that and the I'm. best cheese in the world. Yeah, you could just like throw me in a sandbox filled with like dots of gorgonzola. Can and I join you? Cheese. <laughs> Please. But wait, this dish, I love her concept of layering cold and warm and cold and warm. And this was a surprise. Like you dug underneath the greens and then you find this beautiful surprise package of that uh, wild mushroom custard. And I didn't find it to be chewy at all. I thought it was just like. A package, of, a, a package of like the mouthfeel on it was terrific. It was, Outside man, it was just a nice feel. Yeah, like a panna cotta, but yeah. 
Savory, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic dish. Mm -hmm. Next, the entree called the Asian Trio. This was um, three items, the first one being orange zest scallops, the next a miso barbecue short rib, and then the kaffir lime shrimp. The orange zest scallops were two really large jumbo scallops with a great sear on them. I'm not sure if they crusted it with brown sugar or something sweet, but it had a nice, perfect sear on it and a little crust of, uh, crust of sugar. Uh, the glaze on it was a uh, infused with orange and fresh ginger. It was just delightful. Uh, the miso barbecue short rib, super tender, mm. smoky, a little bit of that sweet miso kind of a flavor. And then st uh, in the center was a, a cute little mound of sticky rice with uh, like a package with ginger and black sesame Boy. seeds. And then the kaffir lime shrimp, which was large, uh, two large jumbo shrimps with a kaffir lime commonly um, used in a lot of Asian dishes. The kaffir lime juice is usually too tart and acidic to use in cooking, but the zest is beautiful for making sauces and things like yeah, that. That's, that's profoundly used in um, Thai restaurants, right, kaffir exactly. lime. But what's nice about the sauces was it didn't overpower the dish. They're very light, but powerful sauces. They, a lot of butter on too. <laughs> the, the French. Right? Thank goodness for the yeah. French influence there. The only thing, just for the price, again, you know, twenty-seven dollars. I loved this dish. I'd like to maybe see just maybe one more scallop, one more prawn. Well, looking at the sauces and look at the preparation, and everything you get with it, uh, I thought it was pretty fair. But yeah, yeah, it was very, yeah. very. My, my palate was still happy from yeah, it. That's okay. So, then the next dish, ah, oh, the prosciutto wrap filet mignon. This is like the king of kings here. This is a six ounce thick slice filet mignon medallions with sage bread pudding, fresh baby veggies, and on a red onion butter sauce. Oh Spectacular God. dish. The filet just melts, literally melts in your mouth. I don't think I've ever had a filet this tender, that just kind of like, wow. It, it was pretty delicious I mean, and a good hefty portion too. I mean, at least eight ounces of filet, which is generous. Yeah. Uh, holy delicious cow. But that gorgeous bread pudding. Wasn't with that, that delicious? The, the scent of the sage and the, the perfume of it was just elegant. And, and it was like a creamy Thanksgiving stuffing. You know, it was just the texture was outstanding. But that with the sauce, with all the textures of everything you got, just made this dish stand out. And this is definitely one of my I, favorites. Mine as well. Mine as well. And the next one wasn't too bad either. We had the pork chop carnitas, which was a little bit misleading on the menu, or at least the way I read it. I was expecting something different, but totally not disappointed. This was a huge 12, possibly even 14 ounce thick cut chop. I'm telling you, I don't know how you can cook pork this tender. It was cooked all the way through. I'm thinking it's going to be tough. It was melt in your mouth like butter. Um, uh, just amazing. Like, you could just, like, massage it. And, <laughs> I, I well, the mean, juices, it was just flowing. It was just so good. And, and then there was two small pork, um, uh, carnitas shredded pork enchiladas wrapped in corn tortilla with a little bit of a spicy sauce to it. A nice little addition and uh, uh, almost like an aperitif for a, a accompaniment to and the, the rice. pork And the rice. It's a cilantro rice with lots of butter in it. I love the rice. Did it, you? It was firm. It was just tasty as can be. And I, 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 I like the rice. flavor of cilantro. I wasn't as overwhelmed with it as you oh, were, really? but I, I love the color. It was very bright, and it just it it's didn't dazzle woman. me as like much as you. Ah, I'm not a rice girl. Just <laughs> give me the pig. Just give me the pig. Oh, I love the rice. So, <laughs> then finally we had the, uh, it's called Christina's Chipino. Wow, this consists of Manila clams, rock shrimp, a fresh fish of the day. This was snapper. It came with a spicy tomato broth with basmati rice and a bruschetta, and zucchini and carrots. What's interesting about this, first of all, it had rice in it. Most of the time, on the chipinos, usually it's linguine or a pasta. This wasn't. This is rice. So Very Tuscan. This is her Tuscan, her Italian influence in this dish, too. Yeah, I mean, Almost like a gumbo, but like an Italian gumbo. Me of that too. Right. I love the broth. It was, it was um, very rich tasting. It had lots of good flavor to it. It wasn't real mild. Um, it said something. And, you know, that's 
to me, that's what a Chipino should, it should tell you something. And this one just said, eat me, eat me, <laughs> have did. more of me. Very, very nice texture. I, I was slightly disappointed. I like a big, powerful overload of crustacean and big giant shrimp. This was not for this price. smaller rock shrimp and the baby manila yeah. crams, but uh, ever so tasty. I'm not complaining very at all. Very affordable. I mean, Absolutely, just a super yummy dish. No, and the bread was like, um, we couldn't get enough of that bruschetta. <laughs> bruschetta. So, very tasty. And we finished with a slightly underwhelming but nice homemade salted caramel milkshake. Salted caramel is really popular right now. This was just a homemade vanilla bean ice cream with some caramel sauce uh, blended in with it. I was a little disappointed. I needed to see some whippage. You know, it's a milkshake. There was no whippage. Folks, if you, li <laughs> if you like whippage, watch the end of the show during credits. Yeah. You're going to see a blooper part of this. Okay. That's wonderful. All right, why don't we wrap it up then, Alan? Sure. What was your favorite dish? I liked the uh, medallions, the flaming mignon medallions, and the pork. Very juicy, delicious. Absolutely. I agree on the pork chops for a main entree. Warm mushroom salad, absolutely like decadent. You. you have to get that. Um, even as an entree, I could, maybe three of them would be terrific. So Christine's all around. I mean, we ordered off the dinner menu. They have a very vibrant and busy lunch lunch crowd as well. The lunch menu is a little bit scaled down, but you can get some really terrific items. The, we're filming here in the, uh, the the little back room, but this room can be used for a private party. She does a ton of catering, and this room is also for her culinary classes. Yeah, she, she has cooking classes. Yeah, at least one a month, and fantastic. What a great great person to learn from. So. Wow, good food, good people, and Yay. good prices. Absolutely. And where are we going next? Next, we're off to see Cassidy and a wonderful segment she does.